We're going to demonstrate how to take skin fold measurements. I'm going to show you some different calipers first. The Harpenden caliper is a very high quality research grade caliper. A little bit harder to use perhaps because as you move it, it will go around to 20 millimeters. We measure skin folds in millimeters. Then when I go around again, the little dial inside shows I'm between 20 and 40. And then I can go around again up to about 55 or so. The Lang Skinfold Caliper is the one that I'm most used to using. And the Lang Skinfold Caliper, you'll read millimeters right on the dial as the needle moves. The Harpenden and the Lang Calipers are around $200. So there are less expensive models. There is a FATO meter, which is a little bit difficult for me to use. And the FATO meter, in order to use it, you have to kind of push it up to open it up. And there's a little plastic type, which is only about $10. On that one, we're going to put it on the skin fold. You're going to press it until the little arrows line up. That's trying to make consistent tape tension. All right, to check the calibration of a caliper, I'm going to use a Lang caliper. First off, when the caliber jaws are closed, it should read zero. Then if I have a calibration bar, which you can purchase, this is 15 millimeters. I put it in there and it should read 15. I also have a five millimeter calibration bar. So the diameter of this one should read 5. If I wanted to check the calibration, for instance, of my plastic skin fold caliper, again, I can put it in, should be 15 millimeters when I line up the arrows. OK, so we're going to demonstrate the skin fold measurements. All of the measurements are done on the right side of the body. That's a standardized technique. Uh, there are two different locations for a, a number of the skin folds. If you're using a prediction equation that is a Jackson equation, so you have to look and see who the author is, then you must use the Jackson sites. If you're using an equation from any other author that's not Jackson, you're going to use the standardized sites. So when we have a difference, we're going to show the standardized site first and then the difference with the Jackson site. All right, we're going to start with the chest measurement. The chest measurement is done from the anterior axillary line. And typically, it's going to be from that point to the nipple. But for the standardized sight, we're going to go as high up near the anterior axillary line as possible. I'm going to pinch with my thumb and index finger the tips of those. It's going to be a diagonal skin fold, so it's angled slightly down. I always pinch above the site. I have a little gap about one centimeter between my fingers and the skin fold caliper tips. And then I release the caliper jaw and I read it about four seconds later. Make sure you open the jaws up when you take the caliper off. So the standard site for the chest, high up on the anterior axillary line. For the Jackson equation, we're going to need to measure from this axillary line to the nipple. It's halfway for men. It's a third of the distance for women because we want to be off the breast tissue. So I'm measuring right at the axillary fold here, measuring down to the nipple. A third of the way for women will be three centimeters. I'm going to mark that. right there. So the mark is where the caliper tips go and I have to pinch above that mark. So I pinch above, caliper tips go right at the mark. Once I release the jaws I wait about four seconds and I take my reading. This is three millimeters. Notice there's a little gap between where I'm pinching and where the caliper tips are. The reason for that is to prevent pushing fluid out of the skin fold site. Yep. Okay, then we're going to go down to the 
abdominal measurement. Again, we have a difference between the standard and the Jackson sight. Always right side of the body. Standard sight goes three centimeters from the umbilicus and one centimeter down. We're not going to eyeball that. We're going to measure it. I'm going to go three centimeters over from the belly button. Put a mark there. One centimeter down. Put my mark there. So I'm going by my lower mark. The standard measurement is a horizontal skin fold. That is the direction of the skin fold. My fingers have to be vertical to make a horizontal skin fold. So if you can visualize that skin fold is going horizontally, caliper tips go right where my mark is. I'm going to pinch a little bit more there. OK, four seconds, I take my measurement. Jackson is two centimeters from the umbilicus. So I'm going to put another mark here. Two centimeters is right there. Jackson is a vertical skin fold. So my fingers are going horizontal to make a vertical skin fold. Caliper tips go right in there. Four seconds, and then I take my measurement. For each of these measurements, I should be writing them down because I'm going to do all the measurement sites once. I'm going to come back and do them all a second time, just like we do with circumference measurements and diameters. And then I'm going to do a third site if I need it to be consistent enough. We're going to go to superiliac. So superiliac is above the iliac crest. So I'm going to palpate the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS. The standard site is going to go posterior to the mid-axillary line. The mid-axillary line is the armpit. So I need to come posterior. I'm going to be back here. I need to be at the level where the iliac crest is. It's a diagonal skin fold. So I'm going to pinch it, put my caliper tip on and read the measurement. So this is probably what some people call like the love handles. It's going to be posterior to the middle of the armpit. So for the Jackson superiliac, again, it's right above the iliac crest. It's superiliac above, but it's going to be on the anterior axillary line. So that's the front of the armpit. So if you kind of visualize that, we have our little mark here to show how far anterior, posterior we need to go. Again, it's a diagonal skin fold. I'm going to pinch behind my mark, put my caliper tips right at the point where my mark is. Mid-axillary, middle of the armpit. Again, we have a Jackson in a standardized location, but they are both pretty much right at the level of the xiphoid process. So I need to palpate that. I'm going to come right over here. I'm going to put a mark so I know how far and uh, up or down I need to go. Xiphoid process. The standardized site is a horizontal skin fold. We can move her arm forward or back to get it out of the way. I need to pinch so that the skin fold is going horizontally. For the Jackson, same location, but it's a vertical skin fold. So I'm going to pinch above my mark so that my caliper tips can go right at the mark. Skin fold is going in a vertical direction. For triceps and biceps, just like you did for the circumference, we need to measure midway from the lateral projection of the acromion process down to the olecranon process. Again, we measure along the side of the arm. I get 34. 
So I'm going to mark midpoint 17 centimeters right there. When you take the skin fold measurement, the arm has to be hanging, relaxed by the side. For the triceps measurement, I'm going to go right over the belly of the triceps. For the biceps, I'm going to be right over the belly of the biceps. These are exactly the same. There is no special site for Jackson. Some people like to visualize it. Others like to kind of put a tape measure there, bring it around and mark it so you can see what level you're at. Likewise in the front. So triceps, right over the belly of the triceps. I pinch above, it's kind of like a little hook coming down. I've got a gap between my fingers and the caliper tips, which should be right where my mark is. It's a vertical skin fold. Similarly for the biceps, bring my fingers down pinch right over the belly of the biceps, vertical skin fold. Notice there's a gap between my fingers and the caliper tips. Okay, then we've got subscapular. So subscapular is gonna be right at the inferior angle of the scapula. If you're not sure, if it's not so easy to locate that, she can bring her arm back. It'll wing the scapula out. I'm going to put a little mark right at the inferior angle. This is a diagonal skin fold. I'm going to pinch above, put my caliper tips right where my mark is. Now the standardized site says just below the inferior angle. I've marked the inferior angle. Jackson says one to two centimeters below, so I think essentially they could be the same spot. Because if you're below it, you're probably a centimeter below. So I'm pinching, I'm right below that inferior angle. Okay, then we've got the thigh and the calf to do. So we need to mark the midpoint of the thigh, just like we did for the mid-thigh circumference measurement. We want to measure halfway from the inguinal crease where the leg bends to the top of the patella. I've got 37, so that's gonna be 18 and a half. When we take the measurement, the foot is off the stool She's standing, weight on both legs, right knee slightly bent. We're always on the right side of the body. I need to pinch above, and this can be a tough one because if it's really firm tissue, you've got to pinch pretty hard. You're not just doing something like this where you're just getting a little bit of skin. You've got to kind of dig in there, try to pull it away so you can measure that. Okay, that time it was sliding a little bit. Might try that one more time. Pinch above, try to pull the skin away. Caliper tips go on, you take the reading after about four seconds. Okay, the last measurement is the calf. We're going to have, again, the hip and knee flex to 90 degrees. I need to measure the medial side at the level of the maximum circumference, just like we did a calf circumference measurement. So I'm going to, again, pinch above. It's a vertical skin fold, level of widest part of the calf on the medial side. 